definitely put herself in contention at the top battled a minor back injury indoors so that slowed her down it's been a progression a gradual progression through her outdoor season they focused on improving her start but not overemphasizing it it's really her top end speed that she has a ton of confidence on and coach dennis said she would put her top end speed right up there with anyone in the world and battle is a 2021 olympian she was third at the trials Also, Rosemary Chapuma of Texas Tech, and here she qualified through in the, for the 100 as well. She's down in lane number four. But right now, it's Flannel and Battle in six and seven. Right, and a Battle now takes the lead over Flannel. It's Battle and Flannel, and that is the way it's going to end. Boy, that's close. That was almost a dead heat, but those are the two automatic qualifiers. Anavia Battle, the Olympian. Now a senior at Ohio State and Kennedy Flannel, the Longhorn Junior. Yeah, you know, we spent so much talking time talking about a Navy of Battle because she actually has the fastest PB in the group at 2195. She ran that last year at the 2021 U.S. Olympic Trials. But, uh, man, you got to give it to Kennedy Flannel here. She had a disappointing run in the 100, but look at the way that she finished down the stretch in this 200-meter dash to go ahead and get the victory in this one. And then also pay attention to Eddie Dong. Odie Dong from Florida State, who was a, a Rio Olympian in the 200 meter, a semifinalist coming in in third place. We'll see if her time of 22.43 can get her through to the final. So just 100 separating first from second with Flannel getting the win and Battle finishing second. Odie Dong probably will get through with that 22.43. That was a lifetime best for her. All right, we move around to event number eight, number three of day two, the pole vault. Well, this is where your legs really begin to feel it. Long second day. The pole vault lasts a really long time. You got so many jumpers. They split them up onto two pits. Higher jumpers with the personal best on one pit. And this is Leo Neugebauer of Texas, just a sophomore. Surprised they found poles big enough for that guy. <laughs> like he could play outside linebacker for somebody, Robert Wright. First attempt at 15-9. He's over for 854 points, and that's as high as he would go. Kyle Garland on the same pit as Neugebauer. He would squeeze over 15-9 and a quarter for 852 as well. Personal best at 15-11, so he's not far off that. Nice crossbar. Yeah. Very, very, very friendly. I'm shocked that crossbar didn't break. But here's your leader after six events. This is his first attempt at 14-9, an event that he has desperately been trying to get better at all season long. But first attempt at 14, nine and a half, and he would be over as well. His personal best, 15, 11. So a little ways off his all-time PR, but they're through eight events now, two events to go. There's your leader, Neugebauer of Texas, Aiden Owens not far behind, and Kyle Garland waiting not far behind them. All right, semifinal number two of three. And this one fe features the collegiate record holder, Favor Ophili, the sophomore from LSU. She'll be in the middle of the track in lane number six. And she is a busy young lady. Four events today, a leg on each of the relays, and then the 100 where she qualified, and now here, the 200. Yeah, and Favor Ophili's just got to do one thing and one thing only, focus on the race that she's in. She ran that collegiate record back on April 15th. And she's the first collegiate woman to run a win legal sub 22 and her time ranks number two in the world this year. She is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Just inside her in lane number five, the sophomore from Texas, Rashidat Ray Adelike. Just 19 years old and from Ireland, Coach Florial said she bounced around among the events this outdoor season to really keep things fun, keep competitions Fun. So we really haven't seen all that she's capable of because she hasn't just focused in on the 200. She has great versatility in both the 200 and the 400. She was the European under 20 champion in both the 100 and the 200 last summer. She's also very tall, six foot one. You'll see it when she gets out of the blocks, just how long and imposing that stride is. Adela Kay in five, Ophelia in six. First two automatically qualify to the final. Oh, somebody looked like somebody moved early, and that echo from that gun is really tough. 
but it is away and it's a fair start in favor of Feely moving nicely through the turn and a delicate trying to catch her for Oregon that is Iman Brown as she falls back on the outside now in lane nine Joella Lloyd who also made it through on the hundred she's going to get second it's favor Ophelia winning in 22-14 with a slightest little headwind on the finishing straight of minus 0.2 and she runs 22-13 and made it look easy Lloyd from Tennessee ends up getting that second automatic qualifier and the Lashara Hargrove of Iowa finishes third yeah it looks like there might have been a little bit of movement at the start like you were mentioned Dwight so we can see here in slow-mo Say, they're know. keeping him in the blocks a really long time. Doesn't it feel like these are some extended holds once the gun is up? Laura did, but that was also in slow motion, but no uh, one jumped. No, that was great. In favor, Ophelia really, really looked impressive, very relaxed. Her name is Favor, but all she keeps doing is handing out L's to her competition, guys. I love it. You see her calm, relaxed face. I told you she's got to focus on this race and worry about the other ones when you get there. Well, that is the fastest qualifier in meet history. 22-13 for favor of Philly fastest since Kimberly Duncan ran 22-19 about a decade ago. Joella Lloyd qualified now in the 100 and the 200. And Lashara Hargrove has got to wait to see what happens when they got the third heat results if her time holds up. Let's go over to the women's shot put taking place right now. This is Adelaide Aquila of Ohio State, her first round throw. She was an Olympian last year for the U.S. She had an incredible performance at the U.S. Olympic Trials. And her very first throw, she pops one out to 64, five and a quarter. That'll ice the competition pretty quickly. A collegiate and meet record for the Ohio State Buckeye. We'll keep an eye on her. Third and final semifinal. And this one features Abby Steiner, who we saw make her very first NCAA individual final for the Wildcats. The junior from Dublin, Ohio. She will start in lane number six, and this is really her specialty. Oh, yes, it is, Dwight. And I saw her warming up today, and she had the look on her face that you see right there on the camera. She's just locked in, ready to go, and she's peaking at the right time as Abby Steiner stunned the field in the 100, running a personal best at 1090. But the most impressive thing I've seen her do this year was that 48-78 split on that collegiate history, third leg collegiate. They got the collegiate record in that 4 by 400 meter, and they were the first team to run under 322 and it was largely in part because of her also got melissa jefferson there from coastal carolina a sophomore it's 2022 ncaa champion in the i mean woo, in the six meter dash and she's number five all time uh, in the hundred at 1088 That's and wild. she looked fantastic earlier oh, on like she ran that 100 to qualify on to the final in that event looking to make sure she secures the position in both the 100 and the 200 keep in mind abby steiner was at home watching this meet one year ago she had that achilles injury that ended her outdoor season Four of the women in this heat have already qualified in the 100, including Abby Steiner and Abby Steiner and Melissa Jefferson. Look at Steiner run this turn. Ooh, she is moving, moving, I mean, moving. She is built for the indoor 200, but she can run the turn here as well. Grace Quocha of North Carolina A&T out there. Now here comes Kavona Davis, and Davis is going to get that second spot. And Steiner 22-02. That equals the championship record. And the wind is just a .5 tailwind, so it's legal. And, of course, it's a lifetime best for Steiner, who came in with a 22 rotational back in late April. Guys, Abby Steiner is on a mission. She just ran two personal bests, one in the 100, another in the 200. She seems to be locked in. That Those two second-place finishes at the SEC Championships might have been the best thing for her because she's come to these NCAA Championships hungrier than ever. Lonnie Green said the key to her success this outdoor season has been to holding her rhythm, pushing through, and sustaining that rhythm when she hits that fatigue point. He said had she not sustained the injury last outdoor season, he's very confident that she would have been a part of that U.S. Olympic team. 
So she ran 1090 for a lifetime best in the 100, and now 2202 lifetime best in the 200. It is going to be a heck of a sprint. Do 